I was never gonna be a man's physique. Didn't have much of an off season. I like his physique better. I'm always very energetic. I will have to put me as one of the greatest. Mr. Olympia was won by the back. I have a question. So let's say a, a young guy or whatever, the, you know, an adult man is watching this right now, right? And they, they want to be a pro bodybuilder, so they're competing on an amateur level right now. And they have pressure to take steroids in order to be competitive. They have pressures in order to be, you know, to gain the size. So what, what advice would you give to them right now? They're watching you right now, and they're asking, what do we do? We, we're pressured to do it in order to be competitive. I would say, Vlad, it's, uh, what a great question. I would say, don't do it. Back away. Back away. Because, Vlad, you and I both know that to be a professional bodybuilder, even an amateur bodybuilder, you, regardless, even if you have great genes, and we're not going to go into who's natty, who's not, you know, Mike, O'Hear, Mike O'Hearn and all this. It's fun, right? That's fun stuff. You know, I mean, you know, did Flex Wheeler have genetic mutation that myostatin deficiency, right, right, myostatin deficient, and he was so muscular, he might have, he had, he has great genetics, but didn't he end up doing steroids anyway? He did, right, he did. Flex, I'm talking Flex Wheeler, okay? So, so, you know, or, or all these guys have great genetics. You have to have great genetics, and then you have to do steroids. Am I right? I mean, do you agree with me on that? Uh, allegedly, they do. Yeah, uh, they they have to. So, so if they have to, doctor. If they have to, then but you still would, but you still would advise not to. I I would advise one hundred percent to reassess your dreams and goals, and not to do it because you're going to end up one hundred percent on the amount. Of, we're not talking one or two cycles of test and decadrobalin, Vlad. Okay, we're not talking about back in the 70s where guys might have done. And, you know, I'm not saying these are bullshit guys, but even back in the day, they did six week cycles and they tried to come off. Remember, I'm 57 this year. I remember back in the 80s and I saw guys from the 70s because I was they were they were they were in their 30s. They were young men. And even the even the top professional guys, no names mentioned. I, they've been patients of mine. So because I've been doing this for 20 years. So. You know, it's a slippery slope. It used to be a slippery slope, Vlad. You, you you train naturally. Ron Harris talks about it all the time. You train naturally until about 25. You, you, you max out. And then this is back in the 80s and 90s, maybe. And then even, even Ronnie, right? Ronnie Coleman, the, the king. He trained naturally to about 23, 25, maybe or more. Well, actually, I think it's true. Absolute genetic freak. Great dude, obviously a great a great man, incredible superhuman, and still great to this day. His personality and his and triumph were fighting, you know, what's happened. And but he did steroids, you know. So guys, you have to do steroids. I don't. I'm the doc. I I know. I do it every day. It's my day job. I see the suffering. It may be worth it to you. You may be young and say, I'm a warrior. I'm going to do it. And it's going to be worth it to me. I don't care. It's like being a NASCAR driver. You, you could have that eventful crash and you're dead. Jockeys can die from broken necks and backs. I, I mean, so people are triumphant. They, they, but every single bodybuilder, even on the amateur level, let's be honest, is going to take steroids. They're going to, number one, they're going to be shut off. Not, I, I, I'm overloaded with business. Because guys do steroids, even small amounts, and they have anabolic steroid-induced hypogonadism. This is my research papers. And they're shut off. They, they, they even a little bit of st – in SARMs, these guys can't come back. They're 17, 18, 15, 20, 23. They, I do SARMs. I don't – I'm not doing steroids. I do SARMs. Everyone says it's okay. And then they come off, and they're worse because so their their brain is off, their testicles are disconnected, disconnected. So my thing is this, if you're saying don't do it, right? And you, I'm assuming you watch bodybuilding, right? I'm assuming you like to watch the yeah, competitions some, once in a while. Or, or, sometimes, or, you know. I really don't, I really don't though. I'm a power lifter, but I'm busy with my job. I mean, I've changed, I'm an older man now and I've, I, I, 
I really don't like to watch it because it kind of hurts. It hurts me because I know what they're, what they're, it, the body dysmorphia is so bad. The destruction is, ho is horrible. But let's say you were a fan, right? You know, let's say you are, you, let's say somebody's out there a fan of bodybuilding. So what, if, if all the bodybuilders take your advice, would then, as a result, bodybuilding as we know today would basically disappear or morph into something completely different? Yes. 100% flat. Of course. But hold on, Vlad. I don't think that's realistic. That's like saying that that's like saying that we're not going to have anger. We're not going to have greed. Come on, Vlad. That's like saying we're not going to have people stealing. We're not going to have people cheating the, the, the IRS. We're, come on, Vlad. This is primitive. This is primitive. OK, these are primitive drives. And it's the accessibility to steroids including the knowledge to know how to do that with the internet, it's a blessing and a curse. This is never gonna stop. I'm one doctor, I'm the anabolic doc. I own this world as a leading physician. I own it, I've been owning it for a long time. The research I see, the destruction is horrible. So that's like saying, kind of, but it's, you know, doc, heroin is used, people feel great on it. You know, they use it and forget the pain side, you know, for opioids, narcotics. They do it. Well, it's what, what do you think? Should they not do it? Should they do it? It's like, well, it's going to be used. Can it be used safely? Kind of a bad. I put myself in a corner on that, maybe because because could, could opiates be used safely? Theoretically. But look at the opioid damage. Come on, Vlad. So, you know, people get addicted to these things. These drugs have side effects. If you guys, you, if you're going to be a pro bodybuilder or amateur, you use steroids, I will still love you. I will still respect you because I did some steroids to be a, to be a, a bench presser, to bench press over 500. I, I was bitten by the bug. I wanted to do it. And now I've been on testosterone for almost 30 years, Vlad, 30 years. Well, you, take, like you, you take in levels that basically bring it up to normal, right? You, that, yeah, that's, I take, yeah, I take 100 milligrams every five, six days, right, Vlad. Right, right. Which is completely different for those who are confused about that. If you can explain, this is completely different from bodybuilding dosages that you know a normal bodybuilder would take i just want to make yeah, sure so people every, understand it's completely different situation yeah so every so everyone everyone knows that yeah every everyone knows that you know it's 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 it's, it's all testosterone you know test everyone's on a base of testosterone we're not talking you know a month out for the show where they they some gurus recommend stopping testosterone and going on trend you know, or equipoise by itself or Winstrol or one of these. I'm not a guru, but I know the drugs that are being used because I see the, the effects medically. So when when you look at testosterone, it's kind of like booze. It's like alcohol. If you drink a little bit of red wine every day, Vlad, if you drink a little red wine every night, you, you may, you're, you're not going to have health consequences. And the truth is you may actually have a better quality of life and you may even live longer. This is probably this is probably relevant for testosterone. Uh, uh, see? But we don't we don't have data for that. I have to be I'm the I'm a scientist. We don't have discrete and data saying that. We're, but if you have low T and you're 45 years old because you've been obese, you're diabetic, because you've done steroids, because you have depression, you're on antidepressant medicines, you had brain trauma, come all the above, none of the above. And you go on a little testosterone with me and a good doctor, and you're you're vig you're monitored vigilant, you're vigilantly monitored incredibly tight, and you're given some of these medicines that you may need that I take. Uh, you you with the grace of God, you're gonna live. You you could definitely live a long life, but d the whole question is, do you need testosterone or do you not? Testosterone is a light switch. It's either on the on or off position. You're either on it, Vlad, or you're not. Th then you're either on a low dose, sustainable dose called TRT, or you're on super physiologic, which is then it goes into steroids. And then guys, you know, I love guys, you know, guys are like, doc, I'm on 400 a week. That's TRT, right? Okay. <laughs> you're blasting and blasting cruise. You know, all these words, right, Vlad, but you're not a steroid user. So you don't know it in your body you don't know it what's the limit like what's the dose where it goes 
at that dosage, you you're way above TRT, basically. It depends. That it, de oh, it depends on your. It depends how much you need per. Okay, got it. It depends on your chemistry. Typically, around two hundred a week, and you know when you're over two hundred a week, for for sure. There's how many men on a Gaussian curve? You know when you look at the statistics, how many men require more than two hundred a week? And they're just basically looking for steroids, and that's what that is. It's very, very, very small, less than 1%. Most men take 100 every five, you know, or 75 or 50 milligrams every, you know, these little baby doses every couple of days. And it is unbelievable for the brain, the sex. And this is not too bad, Vlad. It's, come on, Vlad. That's not, you, you don't, I'm proving to the world that you can still be strong as an ox and and super healthy, but you have to have an internal medicine doctor know how to block the adverse effects. And bro, bro science guys, they can't do it because you have to be an internal medicine doctor. Forgive me, forgive me. You know, you, these guys get f so full of anger.